What is up everybody, it is me Devil Never Cry, and in today's video, I'm going to be covering the Devil Sword Dante, the amalgamation of Rebellion and Sparta. I'll be briefly going over the entire moveset, as well as discussing when I think you should be using these moves. With that said though, let's just dive right in. So, first and foremost, the Devil Sword Dante shares the first of its combos. By tapping the melee button three times, you'll get the familiar three-hit combo that Dante always does with Rebellion. The Devil Sword Dante also has access to the Stinger move, which as we all know is lock on, forward, and melee button, with the option to mash the melee button to get the million stab ability. You also have access to the high time move as standard, which is lock on backwards and melee button, which launches you and the enemy in the air, should you hold the melee button as you rise. So far, things seem pretty standard, uh, exactly what we're used to with both the Sparta and Rebellion, but here's where things begin to get a little bit interesting. Devil Sword Dante's combo B starts off as usual with a sweeping attack that goes around Dante 360 degrees, but this time it culminates in a million stab which ends in a short thrust. And this million stab will occur regardless of whether you mash the melee button or not. As many of you know, if you were to use the Rebellion, you'd have to mash to get the million stab to come out at the end of this combo, but for the Devil Sword Dante, it comes out regardless. Then we move on to the Devil Sword Dante combo C, which is a wild departure from what we expect. After the pause in combo C, Dante throws out a prop shredder, a move that used to only be exclusive to the Swordmaster style, but has been ingrained into the standard moveset of the Devil Sword Dante. Now, in regards to when I'd use combo A, B, and C, simply put, I rarely use combo A, simply because the combo ender, the final of the three hits, throws enemies away, and if they're big enough to not be thrown away, you should probably be doing some more damaging moves. As for combo B, I like to throw out this combo whenever I'm in the midst of a few enemies, as it has a wide attack range allowing you to hit multiple enemies at the same time. As for combo C, I like to use it when there's only one enemy that I feel like styling on, as the move does launch, allowing you to follow up with a air trick and get in there and dish out some stylish aerial combos. Moving on from that though, we now have the Drive and Overdrive abilities with the Devil Sword Dante. The Drive ability wasn't available to us when using Rebellion, but now that we have the Devil Sword Dante, we have it at our disposal. By hitting Lock On, moving the left stick back to forwards, and then pressing and holding the melee button, Dante will begin to charge up a Drive. Depending on how many upgrades you have for this move, you will have up to three levels of charge, with the final charge throwing out three drives in a row, with each of them doing slightly more damage than the other. And that's it for the non-Swordmaster ground moves that Dante has at his disposal. Let's see what's changed in regards to his aerial attacks. Straight off the bat, you no longer have the Helmbreaker tied to the melee button in mid-air. You can tap the melee button in mid-air up to four times to dish out the Aerial Rave. Again, this used to be a Swordmaster exclusive move, but it has now been ingrained into the Devil Sword Dante's standard moveset, allowing you to have more access to different moves without compromising uh, on any of these styles. If you still want to use the Helm Breaker, however, it's now tied to Lock On, Back on the Left Stick, and Melee Button. Of course, the Helm Breaker always used to be just the Melee Button, just one singular input, uh, but now it's been bumped up to three. Some people might not like that, but hey, it's not much of a big deal for me considering I always Lock On anyway, so throwing in the Back on the Left Stick input 
It doesn't really add t in terms of delaying my timing or whatever. Now let's move on to the moves you have at your disposal with the Swordmaster style. And this is where the weapon really begins to shine in terms of its damage output and the insane stylish things that you can do. So when you're grounded as Dante with the Devil Sword Dante in the Swordmaster style, if you simply press the style button, Dante will employ the use of four summoned swords. Now the animation for these swords is always the same, uh, consistency is always key when trying to throw some creative things together, uh, so you know what you're getting when you press the style button. The interesting thing about this move is the fact that it can be used whilst Dante's doing other attacks, effectively doubling your damage output. But that's not all. If you hold lock on, move the left stick forward and then press style, Dante will use the stingers move. This is a projectile based stinger which will corkscrew into the enemy, throwing them away as if you were performing an actual stinger. Now, this move is perfect if you want to hit enemies that are at a distance to you, but you don't want to move from your current position. You can throw this out there and it'll do decent damage. Again, at the same time, this can be used whilst you're doing other attacks. Heck, you can double up with another stinger if you wanted to at the same time for that added damage and that stylish combo. But if you then do the opposite of this, which is hold lock on, move back on the left stick and then press the style button, Dante will do the high times attack. The four swords will launch themselves in an arc towards the enemy, effectively launching them. Again, this allows you to launch an enemy whilst you're doing other attacks. If you don't want to go into a high time, uh, if you want to, for example, hit an enemy with a stinger and then immediately combo them into a high time whilst you're still on the ground, uh, you can do so. Again, all these moves are very conducive in terms of creativity. Uh, there's lots of interesting setups that you can use, but I digress, let's move on to the next move. If you press and hold the style button, Dante will perform the round trips move. With this move, Dante gets his summon swords violently spinning behind his back, ready to be thrown at enemies to completely eviscerate them. As long as you keep holding the style button, the swords won't stop spinning essentially allowing Dante to run across the battlefield with an absolute blender on his back. Now once you let go of the style button, the swords will effectively move towards the closest enemies, completely eviscerating them. This is a rather interesting way to re-include and reintroduce the round trip ability into the Devil Sword Dante's moveset. As you know, the standard Rebellion Sword had access to the standard round trip move, uh, so some people were worried when they saw that it was omitted from the Devil Sword Dante's regular moveset. But they have managed to integrate it into the Swordmaster style and it is better than ever. But let's move on to the final Swordmaster move, which is the Dance Macabre. If you press and hold lock on, move the left stick back to forwards and then begin to tap the style button, Dante will go into his regular canned animation where he dishes out an insane amount of attacks one by one, culminating in a massive baseball bat swing that is sure to knock the jaw off of many enemies. So, so far, the Devil Sword Dante has a pretty varied moveset. The standard moveset is almost nothing like the Rebellion, and the Summon Swords Swordmaster moveset is pretty out there, but there's more to it. Thus enters Devil Trigger and all its DSD shenanigans. Simply put, when you enter Devil Trigger with the Devil Sword Dante, each style has its own passive ability. For example, when you are in the Trickster style with Devil Trigger enabled and the DSD equipped, Dante will have access to an increased amount of double jumps and sky stars, effectively allowing you to dodge a lot of attacks with greater ease. If you were to switch into the Swordmaster style, Dante's attack range and attack power would increase exponentially, as you see in the footage here. 
you can see that the summon swords effectively turn the DSD into a larger, more powerful version of its standard self. This allows you to hit and stun enemies from further away, as well as melting their health at a faster rate. If you move into the Royal Guard style, the swords effectively act as a auto guard. They'll even fill up the Royal Gauge automatically whenever they block an attack. And last but not least, when you have the DSD equipped with Devil Trigger active and on the Gunslinger style, the swords will throw themselves at whatever enemy is closest to Dante. As you can see here, I'm not even touching the enemy, and the enemy is flying away from Dante. Now this also works for any projectiles that are thrown Dante's way. The summon swords will automatically parry whatever comes near Dante. And that's the Devil Trigger and its passive abilities wrapped up. There is one more thing that we can talk about, and that is the Swords Formation move, which is employed via the use of pressing and holding the melee button. If done correctly, Dante will summon the four swords outside of his Devil Trigger, allowing you to have access to all the passive Devil Trigger moves I just talked about, whilst not being in Devil Trigger. Do be warned though that this does cost two Devil Trigger runes, so if you don't have enough, you won't be able to use this move. And that is gonna wrap it up for the Devil Sword Dante. Dante has finally followed in his father's footsteps and wields a sword that bears his own name. But, dare I say, the Devil Sword Dante has surpassed the Sparda in every single way possible. Let me know what you guys think. If there's anything I missed out of this tutorial, let me know down in the comments below. Do let me know what else you want to see on the channel. It has been me, Devil Never Cry. I would like to thank all of you for watching, and as always, I'll see you next video.